Yep, yep. Nice. Holy hell. Dine! Dine! How's this thing? I was just riding along the bike and I just saw this like trail. This trail from this stick. <laughs> it's that weird. Hey! So see that? As I think what happens. He's in the wet season, this would have been like mud. And this thing here would have just been getting blown along the mud like this. That's so weird. Put him back. Dine! Hey! Morning guys. Welcome to another episode of Wild Reaches. Today we are back at this crazy big salt pan here in the middle of Cape York. Far north Queensland, Australia. So if you missed the last episode, we were crossing these flats on the bikes and we saw some huge croc slides, like massive crossing this whole distance here. So I spun around and followed the croc slide for like 600 meters or more and I came across this stream in here that was uh, very narrow, which you're about to see. We're gonna go back and fish it. And we caught some good barramundi. So this morning I wanted to come back. We've only got a short day today and then we have to shoot into a town to uh, chat with some people. <clears throat> but um, we wanna fish this hard, fish it properly for a couple of hours and then get out of here. But there's the possibility we'll see some big crocs um, possibility we'll catch some big barramundi but we're definitely going to have a heap of fun and we're going to take you guys with us all right before we get started with the fishing i had a few people ask us recently about the fishing gear we're using so i'm going to give you guys a quick rundown samurai cruisers these are a three-piece rod they're good for on the quad bite they come in a little tube like a little tube like that just straps on um 
Pen Fathom. That's the bait caster and lures we're using, the slim twitches. That's an atomic slim twitcher, that's the big version. I think they're like 120 or 130 mil. And then we, we normally use, I think it's a 100 mil version. But heaps of options in here, got soft plastics. Yeah, there you go there. That's our usual pick. Um, I might even go top order today. I might even do some, uh, what's that one? A Bass Day Sugar Pen in a 120 and just twitch it like walk a dog style across the water in here. I might do that soon actually because it's heaps of fun. So that's it on braid, running 30 pound braid. I uh, don't know what brand that is. No, can't remember. Um, and I'm running 70 pound leader. It's a big thick leader. Let's get into it. Catch a fish before Dane does. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey guys, I've got some exciting news for you all. Well, not all of you, but our Patreon supporters. And we're gonna get straight back to the content really soon, but I wanna, I wanna put this all out there so you all understand what's going on. Um, Patreon.com forward slash wild reaches is us. But Patreon is basically a online platform where viewers can support the content creators to keep going out there and making this content and pumping it out for you all. Um, now I've set it up and we have 10 people on there at the moment and if you're watching now Thank you so much for the support already with only limited perks, but the perks are getting better This is why I'm on here today because I want to show you a few things and explain what's coming next on my computer screen here I can see what they are so the three three tiers that I've set up which are like a payment level and you get certain perks for whichever tier you're in um, tier one is a live chat now, actually all three tiers get this live chat where once a month, on the first Thursday of each month, I jump on my computer on like a Zoom call and you all get on at the same time. You can see me, I'll answer all your questions. Um, I'll, have, I'll be having my dinner or having a beer or something like that and we'll have a good chat. Um, now, you also get access into this private community where anytime you can message me, um, we, can have, we can just be you know, chatting back and forth on there. It's like Instagram, it's really cool. The second tier, you get the live chat, you get the private community, but you also get 20% off all merch. Any merch, caps, hat, um, shirts, all that stuff, and there's more shirts coming. 20% off for the lifetime that you're, you're one of our patrons. Now the third tier, the big one, this is for, the, I call it corporate. It's like the corporate level, there's, it's quite expensive, but um, people just jumped on. We've actually got more corporate people than we do anything else right now. So you get the live chat, you get the private community, you get our latest shirt delivered to your door. No postage, nothing. We just send you a, the, the newest shirt. That's a one-off thing. Um, and you become a supporting member or a supporting company on our website. So you can put your brand on our website, which is really cool. I'm getting to that now. But the biggest thing of all, First of all, I want to say a big thanks to all of our sponsors and all of our affiliate companies, the gear that I love using and I've approached over the last two years and become like a affiliate sort of, um, I don't know what you call it, but like I use their gear and I don't mind telling all of you about their gear because I absolutely love and trust it. I come across a lot of crap and I don't show you guys, uh, maybe I should show you more rubbish and tell you how bad it is. I will do that. All this gear is from these companies that I love and trust. So. Big thanks to all of them. Now what we're offering is once a month a prize draw. Now that's every four weeks we're gonna give away a prize that's worth anywhere between $100 and $200, like proper good prizes, all the gear that I use every four weeks. Now if you are in the first two tiers, the basic or the next level, you're going to get, uh, sorry, the first tier, you're going to get your name in the hat once for the month. If you're in the next two, the next level of the corporate, you get your hat, your name put in the hat twice, so you've got double the chances. Now at the moment, there's only uh, 10 patrons, so you've got pretty good odds of winning. Um, some of the gear we're talking, we're talking a Leatherman, so Wild Earth Australia, they're gonna give us the latest Leatherman. Uh, flip knife from Gerber. Head torch. Uh, lead lens a head torch that thing's like $160 it's brilliant that's the head torch that I use these are the knives that I use this one here coffee packs so there's going to be coffee beans from leaf bean machine 
Um, so that's Wild Earth and Leaf Bean Machine. What else have we got? Uh, my Will and Bear hat. Will and Bear are jumping on board, donating a few hats. So you get to, if you get your name pulled out of this exact hat, you're gonna to get to choose a style and a size that fits you on their website. Let me know what it is, and within sort of two weeks, you're gonna have a hat at your place. Atomic Lures, you know, my favorite slim twitchers. There's gonna be boxes and boxes of them. So like 150 to $200 lure pack loaded with slim twitchers and all the lures that I use. Another thing from Wild Earth Australia, I had these for season five. These things are brilliant. The Gerber pliers, they're absolutely amazing. Perfect for salt water, perfect for fishing. There'll be a set of those. Um, Osbri, you guys all know the Osbri that I use, the grill, fantastic piece of equipment. There's gonna be one of those or two of those up for grabs. Atomic rods. Atomic are gonna give away a few of these rods. So this one's a bait caster, it's Atomic Arrows. I think they recommended retail for about $160. I trialed them out on the last trip and they're absolutely brilliant. They stood up against, you know, some of the other rods that I use that are like $500 rods, this thing was, this thing went really well, real hardy rod. So there's gonna be a couple of those in spin and bait cast. Expedition 134, they, you know those big boxes that I use, you know, they go in the tinny, they go on the quad bike, in the big boat, back of the cruiser, those things are trustworthy. I've used them from the beginning. Um, I've put them through hell and they perform every time. So there's gonna be a couple of those to give away. So I'm gonna have stuff coming out of my ears to give to you guys, and it is gonna be the best quality stuff. It's all the gear that I use up there in Cape York doing what we do. That's my dad on my quad bike. So, I'm gonna have stuff coming out of my ears to give to you guys, and it's all the best quality stuff. You just gotta trust me. This is the gear that I use to do what we do up in Cape York, and I wanna give it to all of you. So, what do you have to do to win? You gotta jump on www.patreon.com forward slash wildreaches. Join the community in whatever tier that suits you, one of the three tiers. Remember that the first tier gives you one entry, the next two tiers gives you two entries. Um, and then you just gotta jump on the live call, which is the first Thursday of every month. Jump on that video call, I'll have my Will and Bear hat here and I'll pick your name out of the hat and you're gonna win one of these epic prizes. And if you can't support us financially, that is 100% fine. We are happy with any of the support that you can give, whether it's giving us a thumbs up, um, writing comments over there on YouTube, sending us messages on Instagram, it's all support that we value and we love and we appreciate each and every one of you, so. Thank you, let's get back to the content. have one to the boys and then they come over for dinner anyway so now we got no food again <laughs> like just getting there and knowing there's big fish in the system and also knowing that the, the danger, there's huge crocodiles in here because we've seen the slides going in like proper big four and a half, five metre crocodiles and heaps of them, there's so many slides. Um, so that danger involved and then the, you know, the anticipation of just about to catch a big barra is just unreal. It is the best feeling.
might be an afternoon spot, that's the thing. It could be get really hot in the afternoons and um, being that it's the dry season, very cold, that's the time of day that they turn on when the water warms up that little bit more. a little bit I guess come back to where we know where they were but it doesn't mean it's gonna be on it does not mean it's gonna be on it's a different time of day yeah. everything's different so we might um might get nothing but we gotta go we got stuff to do we've also got to go and meet a couple of people try and get um some access into into the next spot we want to go so we try and do it right every time make sure that we get permission before we go in anyway uh, that's pretty important to everyone that lives here so yeah, it's always a bit of a task but it's like it's worth it in the end because you meet some amazing people you hear some amazing stories it's not just about getting that permission even though that's the most important thing it's what you learn along the way so um, we love doing it, and I recommend everyone should be doing it. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> Alrighty, so we're going to the same spot as we went yesterday, where we pulled those three barra out. But we've got to be extra careful this time because because we fished it yesterday. The crocs, if there was any in the area, which there probably was, they're going to know exactly where we were fishing yesterday. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh. So the call about being lucky to get one today was gazumped in about four seconds. I turned the camera off and there was a massive buff under the water, but no, on top. On top. I'm running I'm was running it? surface and it's so awkward to get the lure moving through this yeah, through yeah. trees. So I had slack in the line and I missed him. Well that's that's exciting, so I'm gonna get mine in the water. Oh, bro, I can see a big girl. Yeah. <gasps> yep, yep. Nice. Holy hell. Oh no. Oh, it's honest. Here we go, Nate's onto a decent one. Oh, look at it. Oh, oh I lost it. Oh, no. Oh, shit. No. Oh, shit. Oh. It's all wrapped around the trees. Dude, that was huge. That was way bigger than yesterday's. Oh, I feel like I just had six coffees just straight into my veins. Oh, no. Go, go again. Oh, man. How's that? I saw that fish just cruising with its yellow tail up and I, and I threw it like three meters in front, really slow, perfect. Saw it turn around behind it and go Poof. Really? Oh, that was a big one, dude. No. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Holy I don't know though, that would have freaked me out of Yeah, but you never know. Might pick up his, her little mates. Yeah, a bit sure. It's a bad day. Uh, it's been a slow start to the day. Well, if you hadn't, if you hadn't dropped yours. If I hadn't dropped two. It would have been wild. Look at that. Nice little barra. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Unreal. Oh, it's still fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's still awesome. fun. I mean, like even though I dropped that bloody monster, it's still fun just catching these, yeah. these little guys. And Well, this is probably like... <laughs> You know how you usually get like a couple of rat barrels yeah. and then the big one on the front? Yeah. You usually catch these first. Yeah, well that's the thing. This is the little boy and that other one was, a, was the big girl. Yeah. That's how barrel works. But usually you get these first and then the big girl just waits out the front of the snag. Like she was. And I you was pull bloody, 
you might pull four or five of them yeah. and just think the snag's loaded with rats, but yeah. there's usually a big girl waiting there with all their boyfriends. <laughs> you see uh, how it goes. Too small for lunch. Yep. Back in the drink. See you, mate. Sure, mate. Nice. Well, I'm still shaking from my experience. Hopefully the camera caught that, but I just saw this big girl just cruising really slow in front of the snag, saw the yellow tail up, and um, I threw a lure like well out in front of her, brought it back in front of her nose, about a meter off, and she circled around the back of it and just inhaled it. Saw the whole thing, but it was just such a battle. Oh, he's just hanging down there. Is he? Is that the same one? You can see his tail. Oh yeah. Maybe I speared him into the mud. <laughs> Alright guys, I gotta call it. That's gotta be it for the morning. The addiction is strong, but just wanna keep casting, especially after seeing a big girl like that. But we got we got other things to do and we've already like we've pushed it about an hour and a half longer than what I thought we would. So yeah, we're gonna move on, but we'll see you guys down the track somewhere soon. Look at these big brogers, how cool is this? They're one of my favourite birds, the brogas. They're just so prehistoric and their call is just beautiful. I've got a sardine sized barra. It's the size of the lure. Like, what did he think? Look at, the, look at the size of the lure compared to the fish. He's gorgeous though. It was so small. It was fractionally larger than the lure. It was amazing actually that it tried to take the talent. They're gutsy, aren't they? Oh. So, anyway, could have been a good morning if you didn't drop the fish of the trip. But, on a positive note, day two, <laughs> big barra. Fish of the trip, mate. Best fish so far and it's gone. Come on, what are you doing to me? <laughs> You're killing me. So we're just hooning through the track here. And I saw a little frill neck lizard take off and probably scurry up a tree, but I couldn't quite see where he went. We're going to sneak back and have a look. See if we can show you him. So see this big K-pop? You see it? He went into the tree left of that, that little one. There he goes. Huh? There he goes. Where? Deep in there. Over to our right. Oh, that's, is that a snake? Yep. Yep. What is that? It's a green tree snake, I think. Make sure you're sure. Oh, it is, it is. It is, look at him, he's gone up the tree. Oh, he's not real happy, he's gone up the tree. This one just here. Look at that, guys. Just maybe don't chase him for a sec, let him chill out. He's gone up this Maluka. Get him out of here. Yeah, he smells. Oh, it yeah, stinks. it does. Calm down, mate. Whoa. Calm down. Whoa. He's. We'll just take him a sec, eh? Fired up, eh? Well, we came in here for a frill neck lizard and we found this tree snake just, just hanging on the on the trunk of the tree, which is a strange spot for him, I reckon. Yeah. Kind of looked like a vine. Yeah, the way he was in the tree. Maybe that's his idea. Oh, having a go that. And he stinks. He's letting off his, his tree snakes. They let off that, that smell. Must be a defense thing. It must be a defense thing, yeah? Yeah. He's a bit calmer now. In the territory there, bloody, those heads here, yeah, it's darker. Yeah. You get them in the territory and they're blue. I've seen them blue. Their heads yeah. are blue. Yeah. Okay, come on, buddy.
Well, we're I'm just gonna... saying yesterday, weren't we? I'm just saying yesterday it'd be worth a walk in the bush because yeah. they've been back burning so much that they hang out in the trees a lot, I reckon. Just the waiting to pick things get, off. Seek a bit of refuge. Well, even to pick things off, there's a lot of critters getting chased out of where they'd not, their normal habitat because of the fire. Yeah. And yeah, they're also easy to see. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's black. Now, where did this bloody frill net go? Get the double, you reckon? I reckon he's going up a tree. So he's much calmer now. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Obviously, don't grab a snake unless you know what it is. But he was a bit, he was just, he looked really weird in the tree the way he was. But once Dane had a good look, worked out he's a green tree snake. And they or smell. A, yeah. They always stink, them ones. He's gone. Oh. He's happy. Smell that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the frill next is watching us from somewhere. I heard him scurry through here. Well, I'm pretty hungry. Yeah. We've got no food with us. So we might try and show you guys something that you can eat when you're out in the bush like this. Green ants. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, let's pick a green ant off that end. I just had a couple of my boots. Now oh, they're gone. Oh, yeah, they're gone. Oh, I'm not eating that one. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Being in your boot, you can eat that one. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> here we go. Here's a K-pop tree here. See this one? Now, it's a bit tall for me. Let's climb up there. We'll look for a smaller one. But these flowers, you can actually eat them. They're edible raw, but we'll try and find a smaller tree. Oh yeah, there's one here. Here you go. <coughs> oh, covered in green ants too. So here's two sources of bush tucker. Green ants, you grab them by the head like that, and you eat the green part. I'll show you that again. Grab a hold of one, like that. spit the legs out and they've got a real kind of sour taste they're actually quite yummy all right and then the flower the flower is edible just like that now it's not going to give you a lot of sustenance but it's going to keep you going if you get a handful of them you know you can survive i suppose sitting in the in the shade all day if you get stuck out here you sit in the shade all day and then you walk through the night, follow the stars, get your directions and um, you're not burning energy with the heat of the day. You can sit in the shade and just pick at things like that, try and keep your energy up. But luckily we've got one barrow fill up back at camp, so I'm going back for that. They spoken to the to the traditional owner previously and he's it seemed like it was going to be all right to go up in there um, but at this stage we can't get in contact with that same guy so we've just spoken to another another person from the family and um, it just seems like it's a bit too difficult at this stage just need a little bit more time on our hands to get that over the line um, how'd you go, mate? Uh, yeah, like you said, time. Time. Yeah, we need to send an email and they need to talk to other families and, and wait for a reply. Really? Part of the process, eh? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very complicated. It's very complex. It's not straightforward. You just talk to one, like someone from the council. You know, it's, it's the clans have so many families that make up that clan, and um, you, they need to they need to discuss it together. But well, nothing's ever a sure thing, is it? It's not. But it always ends well. You know, like it could be next trip. Yeah. And then you, you get in with some amazing people. Yeah, it's not wasted time, no. really. It's just. Frustrating we just to get fishing. yeah we just have to try and find a way to adjust now yeah yeah which we will because we have had a lot of planning we have had, had a lot of well plans laid yeah a lot of google earthing <laughs> done and a lot of frothing and um all for this point right here right now yeah it's what's the time it's quarter to five in the afternoon and we're still ringing around so it's a last minute scramble, yeah. but it has been known to work before, so <laughs> we'll see. The scramble will pay off. <laughs>